everyone. For today's Christmas card, I'm using the High Hopes Father Christmas block image and I stamped it onto uh, Stampin' Up's watercolor cardstock that I have had for ages with my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. That's the ink I always use for watercoloring. I've never had a problem with it. Um, yeah, I stamped it, let it dry, and then got to filming. So for my watercoloring, I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Markers and my water brush and then just an acrylic block like a stamping block, anything like plastic, glass, whatever would work. Um, I just usually end up using my acrylic blocks now because they're convenient and it all wipes off with baby wipe. <laughs> so whatever is easiest really. But yeah, I scribbled on the color and for the skin I used antique linen and tea dye and I just mixed them together. And then I added just a little bit of sponge sugar for the cheeks. And then for the hair and beard, I'm using pumice stone and I got the area wet first and then I'm just using a really light touch just so there's a, just a little bit of gray just to give it a bit of definition but I didn't want to make it like gray gray because I don't know what you guys when I think Santa Claus I'm thinking you know white hair white beard all that kind of stuff <laughs> so once I did that I went on to the background I just kind of jump all over the place with um, coloring this image today I didn't do um, anything in order I just colored whatever popped in my head <laughs> So for the background, um, again, I got it wet just so it makes everything, you know, flow smoother and look uh, more blended. And I just used the wild honey color for that. And I always apply my color in the areas where I want the color to be the darkest. And then I just pull it out and blend it until it fades out. So I did all that and then kind of darkened the little areas that I wanted a little bit more color saturation. So just like so, and I kind of wanted to make the corners darker. So I just kept picking up more ink and applying it and then just blending it out into the rest of it. So yeah, really simple. Um, for the tree and well any of the green areas I'm using the pine needles. So again nothing fancy, just applying the color. Um, if a person wanted to you can let it all dry and then go back in and darken it, add different colors, all that kind of stuff, but I wanted to keep this kind of as simple as possible. It's a fairly detailed-ish image and yeah, when it comes to Christmas cards, usually you end up having to make quite a few of them. So, got all that done. And then for the red, I was using barn door and fired brick mixed together. But my barn door marker is like dried right out. I don't know if um, I didn't put the lid on properly or what. Although I have had these markers for well over a couple years now. So, I don't know. But yeah, I wasn't completely happy with the red. I wanted it to be a little more saturated, just a deeper red. So I actually just ended up grabbing my uh, my favorite things wild cherry ink pad and just pouncing that onto the acrylic block and just picking up the color straight from that and um, adding that over top and it worked. It just kind of gave it just a bit deeper of the red like you can see here. And I like that a lot better. So did that and then um, these little holly images, that's another high hope stamp. So it's the small open holly stamp and I just stamped it three times with the intention I'm going to cut them out later. So once I did that, um, the little stars are mustard seed. So color those in and then some of the Christmas tree ornaments, I colored the same color and then the little Moses hat. And then I just used um, the same red to color in the rest of the ornaments. And then for the little mouse himself, um, I'm using walnut stain and then I just applied sponge sugar directly like with the marker to the insides of his ears. Just as a really tiny spot like that, it was just no need to like watercolor and blend it out and all that kind of stuff. And then for Santa's glove, I'm using um, black soot. That's one I love that marker. Um, it's just so black and yet it watercolors beautifully. So and then for the white areas of Santa's outfit, I just used a teeny teeny bit um, of tumble glass, just just barely any, just to make it look more white. And then for the frame, I used black soot again. And I just started at the corners because that's where I wanted it to be darkest and then pulled the color until it just kind of faded out in the middle. Again, really simple. So once that was done, as I let it dry, um, I'm just going to use my scissors to cut the image out, which with this one is super simple because it's pretty much just straight lines. And then with the holly, it was a little bit more fussy cutting, but nothing too bad. Um, I do have a video on my channel about cutting out stamped images with scissors, so if you haven't seen that, you can watch out. It might help out a little bit. And then for the pattern paper I chose, it's the 12 Days of Christmas Graphic 45 6x6 pack. And I just got the new Spellbinders Labels 32. Um, I showed that in a haul a few weeks ago, 
yeah. So I wanted to use the, that on this card too. They, it just looks Christmassy to me. <laughs> so I kind of picked out my layout, had everything adhered into place. And then I grabbed, this is some May Arts Wide Wrinkle Ribbon. And you, you'll, you'll notice that like the green of the ribbon, the red of the cardstock, like none of that really like is the exact same shades as like the pattern paper. And I just, I find with Christmas cards, you can kind of get away with that if you do, I don't know, if you do it in the right amounts, you can use more than one shade of green, more than one shade of red. It's just using it in the right amounts. So this bit of ribbon kind of popping out, um, I purposely just wrapped it around and I just used a little bit of um, fine hemp cord to tie a little bow because this ribbon is so wide that it would make an enormous bow that would completely overwhelm the card. So, and then a the little tiny bit of red cardstock to mat the pattern paper onto. Um, just works. I don't know. It just does. It's kind of hard to explain. Sorry. My brain is still like mush from having my baby. <laughs> but yeah, got that all adhered down. And then I adhered one of the cutout holly pieces onto the main image. And then that was it for the front of the card. I just kept it simple since I'd put so much effort into coloring the image. I just kind of wanted that to stand out. And then I adhered the card front onto the card base. And then I used the same layout on the inside of the card. I just used a few different pattern papers from uh, the pack. And then this one is the opposite side of one of the papers. So it was perfect to die cut again with the labels 32 die and have a big enough spot to write something to the recipient. So then I just stamped the little sentiment and that's the high hopes. This is the dot warm winter wishes stamp. So I stamped that onto it with my Verse Fine Onyx Black and then I'm going to adhere the two other little holly images that I had watercolored and cut out and then that's all there was to it for the inside of the card. So yeah once that's done I'm going to adhere that to the inside of the card and of course I couldn't leave the outside just completely plain so I originally was going to add um, stickles but it gets a little iffy with stickles because if um, they seep out a little bit because it's another water-based medium over something that's been watercolored. It can make a huge mess. So I just grabbed my Wink of Stella clear glitter pen and just used a light hand and shimmered up kind of the areas I wanted to. So it's just a lot more of a subtle effect too. So I love how it turned out. Um, there'll be pictures on my blog along with the link to all the supplies used and the link to that will be right below the video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!